It's time for Mr. Fundamental. Presented by no one. In the 2019 offseason, the Indiana Pacers had to retool their roster after a mixture of unrestricted free agents leaving and surprising retirement from Darren Collison. While their additions of Malcolm Brogdon, Jeremy Lamb, and TJ Warren took the headlines, the biggest change the Pacers are making is their plans to start both DeMantis Sabonis and Miles Turner together in the front court. They've experimented with this a little bit last season and got mixed results. Let's see how they'll fit on a full-time basis. Offensively, they should be a good fit, since Turner is very comfortable above the free throw line and Sabonis excels below the free throw line. With both of them on the floor at the same time, the Pacers can take advantage of mismatches in the post if the defense switches. Sabonis uses his strength, backs his defender down, and banks it in. Slotting in Sabonis for Young, who has a mismatch, he can easily score over Lowry before the help comes. Turner can do the same as well. The mismatch forces the help, and a quick pass leads to a bucket. Both of them excels as the screener. Turner prefers to pop for the mid-range or three. Sabonis would present himself to the ball handler, and usually resulting in layups or mid-range jumpers. Both of them have enough shooting touch to provide spacing for each other. Turner was a 39% three-point shooter last season, and Sabonis has the experience and potential to be an above-average three-point shooter. During Sabonis' pick and rolls, Turner would usually station himself in the corner or the wing to spread the floor. The same can't be said for Sabonis during Turner pick and rolls. Sabonis usually fights for low post position near the block, and the ball handler or Turner will settle for mid-range jumpers. Despite that, the Pacers still made it work, since both Turner and Sabonis are great passers as well. The poor spacing here didn't matter, since the threat of Turner's jumper forced a weak side rotation. On the short roll, Sabonis had a choice between Evans down low or Joseph on the weak side. You chose wisely. Since Rozier drifted into pain, even if Joseph misses the layup, Sabonis would have been right there for the putback. By swapping out Young with Sabonis, a lot of adjustments will need to be made. Thaddeus Young wasn't a great shooter, but he made enough threes and had the off the dribble ability to attack closeouts. Sabonis was thrust into that role in his rookie year with OKC, and did pretty well considering their poor spacing. But he just put up his best numbers while stationed at the mid-range area. Sabonis has rarely attacked further than the free throw line and ran handoffs if he's too far out. That's how he was so efficient last season. He's at his best when he's surrounded by ball handlers, where he could have handed off to any teammate. Turner was able to hit this jumper off the Sabonis screen. While Turner has improved his off the dribble game, I'm not sure that's how their coach drew it up. That means if Sabonis wants to sustain his effectiveness, Turner will have to be a floor spacer for longer stretches. If the Pacers want Turner to screen more, Sabonis will need to revert back to his OKC days. This was very evident during their playoff series against the Celtics, where Sabonis spent more time playing at power forward. Only 31% of a shot came inside the restricted area, compared to 56% during the regular season. His field goal percentage also fell from 57% to 41%. This brings up another adjustment. The Pacers took the second most shots between 16 to 24 feet in the league. It's unclear whether that was by design or because of personnel. During the pick and roll, TJ Leaf would go to the strong side block. This eliminates any opening for Oladipo to drive, so he takes the pull up mid range jumper. Once again, Young does the same thing. If Collison drives, both Leonard and Aminu would contest his layup, so he settles for the mid range J. By pairing Turner and Sabonis full-time, this is the type of spacing the Pacers will have, unless Sabonis is the screener or becomes more comfortable attacking from the perimeter. The Pacers lost their best mid-range shooters in Collison, Bogdanovich, Joseph, and Oladipo for parts of the season. While their recent additions would help, they aren't as good as their counterparts. Their strategy could still work, evident by this play, but defenses could catch on and not help on the Turner pop giving up the mid-range jumper instead of a 3. The main adjustment would be on the defensive end. Turner just led the league in blocks, and while he has the ability to switch on the quicker players, the Pacers would benefit more with him closer to the rim. 
Sabonis would also be more effective around the rim, but his rim protection just isn't as good as Turner's. Notice on a lot of these plays, he rotates at the right time to challenge the shot at the rim. Leaving his man at the right time, demonstrating good defensive IQ, but his lack of length just isn't effective enough. This means it's likely the Pacers will station Turner at the rim and have Sabonis chasing fours. Fortunately, Sabonis fared pretty well in isolations. He has the lateral quickness to stay with guards. Even after a hard screen that takes out Matthews, Sabonis recognizes this and contains Kyrie. He moves his feet well and wasn't afraid of pressuring above the three-point line. He keeps Hayward in front of him and contests the floater. On this switch, he was able to stay in front of Kyrie for the whole possession. It was a great contest, but Kyrie just makes a very tough shot. The stats back this up as well. He was near elite in guarding isolation, but it was a very small sample size. Where he struggles the most is guarding spot-ups. On this play, he wasn't able to close out on Morris and gives up the three. This is another instinct that he'll need to adjust. Bigs tend to sag into the paint in transition. Look at how both Turner and Sabonis are in the paint. Sabonis will need to combat that instinct when guarding modern fours. Going back to his closeouts, there are occasions where he can cover a lot of ground, but there are also plays like these. He closes out well, but promptly gets blown by. Even though Morris misses here, it could have been a wide open three because the defense needed to rotate. He was struggling with this at center last year as well. An exaggerated pump fake gets him in the air, and the Pacers give up the an one. This play can summarize almost everything I've mentioned previously. Just a little context. Paul George just made two straight threes. Sabonis demonstrated great awareness by calling out the screen and stepping up to prevent PG's three. But his inability to change directions on closeouts leads to a blow by and an easy layup without rim protection. The Turner and Sabonis pairing won't be a seamless fit. The Pacers know that, but they needed to know whether they can coexist before making any decision on an extension or trading one of them away. That is also why they selected Goga Bidatse as an insurance. I'm rooting for this pairing to work, especially on the defensive end. They've both shown great effort, hustle, and IQ. But what's limiting Sabonis is his lack of length, something he's not able to change. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like down below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.